All right, good morning, good morning. Here we are. We're in the Vicky3 Academy. It's me, Walker, and we're we're doing a redo of the Kick the Tires for Russia because one of the viewers, Simplicity, was looking at it and pointed out that now in 1.0.5, this dude, Sergei Uvarov, he's he's locked. He's a he's a historical character. And so you can't re-roll him to have um, a, something that allows you to change your army model laws. You just got what you got, um, which which is really interesting. And so what it, it's it's going to do, it's going to dramatically change um, the nature of how you play Russia so much so that I I think it I think that this is this is I'm really really happy that 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 somebody pointed that out. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a deep dive um, tutorial line for for Japan to replace the one that that we have where we die because. We don't have to have that be the tutorial. We can do a much better tutorial. We we could just chop up the uh the 1854, but I want to refilm it um just just to ensure that the bandit bug isn't there. So the bandit bug is the thing that uh, one of the other viewers was experiencing is in Japan. The for whatever reason in 1.0.5, bandit seems to just be showing up on like a bunch of random characters. It's obviously a bug, right? There this dude was not a bandit. What is happening? Um, and so there's, there's, you know, it's a new game. It, there's some weird goofball things that occur and that's just kind of like the way we go about it. How, how can we, how can we survive in a, a new, a new world? So here, I think, I think this one, I'm going to try to do this video in 15 to 20 minutes, but realistically th it's, it, this is a two hour video. Russia is incredibly complicated and there's a lot of interesting things going on and I cannot wait to talk about it. Um, but we'll just, we'll, we'll do a very brief overview here. So that way, if you want to, if you want, cause I, I am going to do, I'm going to finish Japan and then I'm going to do Tanzimat first. So it might be a week or two before I do a long form Russia thing, but I, I literally can't wait. Um, so here we are, we've set up our Russia outliner correctly. I think I'm going to go through each of these in lot in in order and just talk very briefly about what your plan should probably be. I think w given that you cannot currently set yourself up to get rid of the army model very easily, I think you need to prioritize another way to, to just make progress. Go into dedicated police force. Dedicated police force is going to cost 420 um, seven bureaucracy. And so it's, it's very expensive. It's going to require that you, you really do build up your bureaucracy, which, which is going to take a little while. Um, but I think if you can get, if you can get into dedicated police force, the extra happiness that you're going to get from everyone is going to allow you to go into appointed bureaucrats. The way you're going to do that in terms of your government organization, you're going to stop suppressing the intelligentsia you're going to go ahead and you're going to bolster the intelligentsia and you're even going to reform government to bring them in. You don't have to do that if you really don't want to, but I think that it is going to be very helpful because you're also going to be bolstering um, the Orthodox Church to help draw more pops away from the gentry assembly. And if you don't have the intelligentsia being bolstered, some of their pops can be per uh, poached by the, the Orthodox Church because they do, they do both draw on... Um, clergymen as well as aristocrats. You can't really afford to start suppressing the gentry assembly right now if you want to use them to work on anything. If you don't want to use them to work on anything and then you st instead want to just see like what happens if you cut the the gentry assembly loose and reform into this and have seven legitimacy, you can do that, but I would encourage people not to. I would encourage to people to get uh, the combined clout of the Orthodox Church and the intelligentsia above maybe 35%. And then you can kick the gentry assembly out, bring the Orthodox Church in, and start suppressing the gentry assembly. And that'll do a lot to, helping you out, to help you out. You could alternatively work with the industrialists instead of the intelligentsia. But the, getting your intelligentsia powerful is going to be really helpful because your heir is an intelligentsia character. And for that matter... Russia, you have a gigantic amount of arable land, just a gigantic amount of arable land, and, and just a, a gigantic amount of land. And so if you can make it so that your country is actually, um, rather than being like, you know, a, a pinnacle of authoritarian racism, if you can turn it into a place where people will be happy to, to move to by moving, you don't even have to go all the way down to total separation. If you just go to like freedom of consciousness 
or freedom freedom of conscience <laughs> freedom of consciousness that's also pretty accurate walker um and cultural exclusion if you can just go to both of those things you'll see as you continue to economically develop you'll see people in in western and central europe start to migrate in towards russia because you don't need to be like the greatest place on earth to attract pops you just need to be not bad um and then and then they'll start coming to you so yeah dedicated police force appointed bureaucrats appointed bureaucrats for those of you who have not seen the bureaucracy video it's really good not because it necessarily this one gets a bonus to the the landowners that's true excuse me, that's true, and this gets one to the intelligentsia, also true, and this modifies taxation capacity, three times true, but most of that stuff doesn't really matter, because taxation capacity, when you're mostly taxing peasants, it doesn't really do anything, and the the biggest bonus that you're changing there is the removing of the 25% uh, gentry uh, assembly political strength, but you're also adjusting the way that your methods of production work, so if you switch over to professional bureaucrats, you just have 8,000 fewer aristocrats in your government. And and given that you're probably going to want to build up a little bit of an industrial base, and for that matter, a little bit of a bureaucratic base, so that way you can do dedicated police force, you're going to have a lot of aristocrats hanging around in your government administration. Getting rid of some of them will be really helpful. Um, and, and the easiest way to do that, of course, is get into appointed bureaucrats. After appointed bureaucrats, I think, and and you at that point you have an Orthodox Church, and um, an intelligentsia government, and of course you you will have higher legitimacy. You might at that point consider moving down to landed voting, but I do want to warn everyone that because of the starting ideologies of both of these characters being fixed as traditionalists, they're extremely likely to want to form a political party with each other. So I would actually encourage you to wait on landed voting until maybe the 1840s or 1850s, once you've gotten industrialists and intelligentsia both to be independently stronger than those two are independently. If you can get them both up into the like low, t- the high teens, low twenties, then you probably want to introduce some form of democratization, just simply because it'll it'll also help combat the strength of the uh, the landowners that way by diluting the amount of political power that they get from their wealth with votes. Um, if you don't understand that, go ahead and watch that video. That one's a good one too. Uh, land-based taxation as you build up your economy you're going to want to switch into per capita taxation but by and large those two first laws i think are the the big ones um so here we are where we're going to write a quick tax bill um always whenever you're adding consumption taxes make sure that you put down a a road maintenance first because it's important to have a road maintenance wherever you're doing construction um you if you're good at the game i'm not but if you're good at the game you can you can just move the road construction around to wherever you're building um and you are mostly going to build like in this little strip right here because if you'll note kiev kursk moscow kazan you have and bryansk is right there too orsha Tver. so you have this massive core right here massive core with a colossal amount of peasants, as you see there. But you also don't have like an infinite amount of infrastructure. So, you know, just be aware that we are gonna have to move in that direction. But but you're, you one road maintenance, one road maintenance will be fine. Just make sure you have one. Use your consumption taxes to tax, to tax rich people. Target primarily at the gentry assembly. I would say something like this is fine. Um, if you if you want you don't have to double boost but i think double bolstering at the beginning of the game is going to prove to be very effective because it's going to allow you to get a lot of pops underneath these umbrellas uh pretty quickly and if mikhail speransky is a, a character who's like fixed here as a moderate with basically zero popularity it's also useful that he's only 63 because he'll die um and then and then you won't have to worry about that low popularity anymore hopefully um, but yeah, writing a tax bill is a good thing. Once you're once you have appointed bureaucrats, you can do high tax, high wage, which will be really helpful for you, because what it'll do is it'll remove money from everybody, and then it'll let you give it back to the people who work for you. Which, if you have appointed bureaucrats, is mostly going to be bureaucrats, bureaucrats in academia. Um, you you definitely do not want to neglect building universities. 
in addition to universities, my recommendation is just uh, at universities and, and a little bit of, of that sort of stuff is just make sure you build a, a construction sector um, wherever you're working. I would probably start with either level fours or fives and then just be aware that you're going to pretty quickly want to switch over to using iron because um, you have an outrageous amount of iron. It, you have an outrageous amount of everything, but you but uh, uh, included under the umbrella of everything is iron. And so you don't need to be shy about it. Um, don't don't be afraid to use iron in your in your construction. But if you're going to use iron in your construction, then you don't want to go up to 15 right away. Because if you do, you'll find out pretty quickly, oh, this is going to cost a million to switch over to iron frame buildings. I would have to build like a 40 stack of iron somewhere that's unwieldy and will take forever in the beginning of the game. Um, so I think it's I think it really is a lot of fun to, to start with these construction sector things um, and then build up, build up a little bit of an iron industry. And then if you can if you can find the time to slot in um, enough enough bureaucracy to to switch over to to dedicated police in like the first two years, and then after passing dedicated police, because that'll be really fast, um, then you can then you do appointed bureaucrats. Other than that, the main building stuff that you're going to be watching for is just anything that'll allow you to get extra substitution um, if you if you conduct trade. Because you do have the ability to conduct trade as, as Russia. You, in fact, probably want to conduct trade quite a lot as Russia. Like, your balance for wood, for instance, 5,000 is being taken out of your market as a trade route. Just put tariffs on them. Like, you're not going to be able to prevent them from doing it, right? But it, it, if people are, are going to come buy your wood anyway, you might as well get paid for it. Um, same thing with like a lot of these other... Any, anything that you think you're going to be making a lot extra of, like balance for arms i think we're gonna probably have more of them than we're gonna need um just because you start with an, an a, a really a hilariously large well yeah we'll set to domestic supply you just start with a hilariously large arms industry and then you just want to like make sure that all of your tariffs are lined up in such a way that you are encouraging the ai to sell um pop goods to you and leave government goods with you um, and if they violate that rule that you get paid for it and that'll really help you out in terms of getting extra money as as russia because again you really do have like a colossal amount of resources and so don't be surprised if people come by and buy like thousands of your iron but you might as well make them pay for it right that that's that's all i'm telling you focus here on these guys those are really important in terms of the productivity don't discount the fact that some of the things are going to be productive in another dimension because like if you can add glass for instance to your uh to all your urban centers that'll generate even more services which will in turn increase the consumption taxes and that doesn't it doesn't say that anywhere but you should be aware of that that anything that can be used in your own government stuff to increase the uh the amount of stuff that you get out of your consumption taxes that's a, that's an a plus upgrade and so getting coal so you can do gas gas street lights that's really good getting glass so you can do market squares that's really good it's just a great way to get your your industrial economy going tariffs pretty simple we talked about that military i think you want to downsize your military a little bit i think it's way too big i think that you can easily go down to probably 200 as a, prof as a professional standing army without getting into too much trouble. If you want to be a little careful, you could down go down to 225, but there's no reason for, for it to be almost 300. All that's doing is buying short-term prestige, which you don't care about, right? At this point in the game, if you're rank three or rank five, it doesn't matter. And so you might as well save a whole bunch of money, which will let you build a lot more, which will let you grow a lot more, which will let you out like be a lot stronger in the late game, rather than just paying a bunch of troops to just stand around. Um, if you have some, uh, if you have some really happy uh, political enemies standing around doing nothing, you can you can make them weaker by firing them. Um, that's okay, especially if they're they're like, if one of these guys has an ideology that that really stands out as being offensive, then I'll get rid of them. Um, no, nobody nobody there, and and some of them were actually quite good. Um, here's a traditionalist. And it's a po he's a popular traditionalist. We might want to just fire him. Popular traditionalists are dangerous, um, long term to the country. 
Whereas this guy, he's a reformer, right? And so what we've done by firing that character there is we've manipulated the RNG of who the next leader of that that in, that uh, ideology group will be. Because if we can make it so that this dude becomes the leader instead of the traditionalist dude, that all of a sudden the parties that would emerge out of being in landed voting are entirely different. And so, so pay very close attention to the ideologies of the characters that you have hired because they are going to have a huge influence on on what would happen in the event that you decide to embrace a democratic process. Um, this is a 15-minute video. I'm going to end it here. If you have any more questions... Oh, right. Last last thing I want to say about Russia is that because you have a colossal amount of, of uh, peasants, you want to get to railways really quickly. And I recommend going lathe mechanical tools then atmospheric engine, then railways, because you do not need um, atmospheric engine for coal to be really, really good, uh, but you do kind of need mechanical tools for steel to be good, because you we have steel working, but we can't really do anything with it, um, whereas if we, if we had mechanical tools, then we could use steel tools, which is really good, because it means that we can then start building up a steel industry, which means that whenever we get to railways, steel industry is already going we've we were able to get it going before we went to atmospheric engines so we could we build the motor industry you see like it's planning everything out one to two to three steps in advance and so that that technological line there of lathe tools engine rail is is probably the strongest thing that is available to to you as russia if you end up needing to switch into democracy really early because you get crazy lucky then you can pick up empiricism um, but other than that, I think you you largely just want to set yourself up to to succeed when um, Alexander II comes in and start working with your intelligentsia and start working against your your uh, your landowners. I can't wait. I can't wait. I, I, I want I'm I'm chomping at the bit for this to be a, a two hour video, but it's not going to be this one. OK, bye.